Uh, hi everyone, I'm Zobe. I'm an imaging scientist at Perspectum. And in this talk, um, I'll go through some of the work we did on using a deep learning based landmark localization model to obtain a Quino segmentation of the liver. Quino segmentation is a system for dividing the liver into eight functional regions based on the vasculature. So in this slide, you can see um, anterior and posterior views of how you would split the liver using this system. And segment four is actually split into 4A and 4B usually as well. And uh, it's very useful for applications such as surgical planning and lesion monitoring and automated methods for obtaining them are needed to reduce manual segmentation time, reduce subjectivity, and also enable automated workflows. Uh, some previous methods for obtaining cranial segmentations have been reported, and uh, some of these have been sort of automated, but um, a recent approach uh, has been to use a unit to directly segment uh, the regions themselves. Um, and it should be noted though that the crino segmentations in practice are only an approximation and the vasculature is kind of used as a guide. Um, and one pragmatic approach is discussed in the paper by Jermaine et al. is to identify certain vasculature based landmarks and use these to kind of create planes that can divide the liver into the crino segments. Uh, so kind of taking this into account, the approach that um, we propose here is to train a deep learning model to based on heat map progression to predict uh, certain landmarks and then use these predictions along with a set of 3D plane creation rules to derive the Quina segments. So an advantage of this type of approach as opposed to kind of directly segmenting uh, the Carina segments using the masks as targets is that if incorrect predictions need to be edited manually, then it would be easier to kind of relocate a misplaced landmark as opposed to editing masks for multiple regions. And also generating labels for training and retraining is also easier in this approach. And to our knowledge, this is the first study to kind of have explored using deep learning landmarking models in the liver, and also the first to use it for the purpose of automatic Quino segmentation. Uh, so here's kind of an illustration of uh, what we mean. So in our approach, uh, you would identify these kind of eight landmarks here, and then you would use these to define the 3D planes that split the liver into the regions. So for example, to create uh, this, this split here, uh, to split the left median and left lateral sections, uh, you would use the inferior vena cava, the inferior part, superior part, and also the umbilical fissure. And these three points can then just define the plane. Um, uh, it should be noted that uh, we couldn't identify a good way to kind of split region one, which is this small red region here, using kind of a simple plane. Uh, so our method is only used for segments two to eight. Uh, here's a quick overview of heat map regression for those of you who might not be familiar. Um, so for the purpose of landmark localization, uh, typically a unit based architecture is used and the kind of the 3D unit that we've used is shown here. And instead of getting your network to predict softmax values for segmentation, you instead get it to predict heat maps. And the hope is that the peak in the heat map would correspond to the location of the landmark you're interested in. So if you have eight landmarks to predict, like we do, then the output would have eight channels, and each channel containing one heat map for one of the landmarks. Um, so to kind of generate a uh, one of these heat maps uh, for training, you would feed your landmark location into a 3D Gaussian um, to get this heat map image predicted, uh, shown here. And you can then train the network to predict these using a mean squared error loss. Uh, so one common issue that has been reported with heat map regression is that even though at training time, the network is only trained on heat maps that contain one peak, at test time, a predicted heat map can contain multiple peaks. So we also developed a method for pruning these false positives and it works like this. So 
Imagine you're interested in predicting these three landmarks, A, B, and C. You would go through your training data and calculate the pairwise distances between each of these landmarks and then store these as a reference vector. Then if for a test set you have um, two peaks being predicted for landmark A, then you would calculate all possible configurations of landmarks and calculate the corresponding pairwise distance vectors and see which of these distance vectors is closer to your reference one. Um, and this way you can prune kind of the ones that might be false positives. Uh, the data set that we used uh, for the experiments in this study uh, had a total of 122 abdominal scans and this was randomly split into training, validation and test. And we uh, tested two different versions of the heat map regression model. One where you just give the whole input image to your network uh, by isotropically resizing it so that it fits into your model. And in the second approach, um, we instead extract patches of consistent resolution from the image and um, predict on each patch separately. And we also compared um, the derived masks to those that are obtained from just a standard direct segmentation model that's been trained on the masks directly. Uh, here you can see how accurately the models predict the landmark locations. Um, SC refers to versions where we apply the spatial configuration based pruning that I presented in earlier slides. Um, so you can see that the full input method here doesn't do that well um, and it did also suffer from the multiple peak issue quite a bit. But then here you can see that the spatial configuration based pruning does actually do quite well at removing a lot of the false positive peaks and improving the results. But then the patch based approach just does um, much better than the full input uh, approach in general. And it didn't also seem to suffer from the multiple peak issue as much, um, which is why the kind of the spatial configuration post processing doesn't really help it that much. But in this scenario, you could still use the spatial configuration based processing as a form of quality control. So for example, this figure here shows the correlation between the pairwise distance vector for the landmarks in a test sample. And uh, we've correlated this with uh, the distance vector from the reference training set. And when you plot this against the prediction error, you can see that there's a, a clear trend um, which shows that it could potentially be used to pick out um, test cases where it might not have done very well. Um, so the actual mapping between the landmark locations and the resulting Quino masks aren't like completely one-to-one, -one. just because uh, sometimes slight changes in the landmark location can still result in the same mask. Um, so it's important to look at the actual dice scores between the derived and the ground truth masks. And um, LPD here refers to landmark prediction derived. Um, so our method uh, needs a liver mask to constrain the quino regions within the liver. So here we show results with a version where uh, we gave the ground truth liver mask and also one where we used the predicted liver mask. And these two box plots here show the dice scores from the full input and patch based direct segmentation models. So it'd be fair, it would be fairest to compare the results from the LPD version that used a predicted liver. And when we compare these to the direct segmentation uh, models, you can see that um, it does do better than both of them, or, uh, but the differences was only significant between these two. And here is a comparison between the Quino segments derived from the predicted landmarks at the top. And uh, here you can see the, Quino, the ground truth Quino segments uh, for one example case. And there are some slight differences, like this plane is a bit more slanted, for example. Uh, but as I said, Quino segments are an approximation and on the whole, this would be considered a good segmentation. So this shows the kind of the dice scores of 0 0.8 that we've reported do suggest some success. 
and that's all thank you for listening